Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd habita fillah as a reminder to myself first and foremost and my brothers and sisters in Islam uh, I wanted to mention the importance of affirming news or affirming information that you hear about people and this is not just from external sources but also many people they read titles especially in this age of social media and then they make assumptions without even listening without even reading further and this is a dangerous 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 practice so it's imperative Allah, that we affirm what we hear because there's so many people who slander, who curse, and backbite based upon assumptions. And it's a very dangerous practice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitabi al kareem Ya ayyu al-ladheena amanu in jaakum fasakum binabihin fattabayinu فَتَبَيَّنُوا أَنْ تُصْبِحُوا قَوْمًا بِجَهَالَةٍ فَتُصْبِحُوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلْتُمْ نَادِمِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kirim O you who have believed Ya you ladhina amanu O you who have believed O you who believe In ja'akum fasik If there comes to you a fasik A disobedient, wicked person, a sinner with information, investigate, lest you harm a people out of ignorance and become, over what you have done, regretful. To be of the nadimi, to be of those who have sorrow. Imam Sa'di says about this, and I want us to look at this, this beautiful, and as a fa'ida, another fa'ida, as I was listening this morning, and I was listening to uh, our Sheikh, Sheikh Abu Salah al-Afghani, uh, Muhammad Hisham, fantastic. Anybody who knows Arabic, please benefit from that young powerhouse. And I'm not exaggerating because I sat with him. Uh, that Sheikh Abu Salah was talking about, Hafid Allah Ta'ala, he was mentioning uh, the importance uh, of the minhaj of the Salaf al and especially regarding tafsir. And the fayda that he mentioned, and this is, and it's relevant for us because. We're going to tafsir Imam Sa'di instead of just giving you something, uh, a general explanation from ourselves. And so he mentioned that this is a, a minhaj for the Talib al -Ilm. This is Shay minhajia, meaning something that they need to stick to and it's a part of their tarbi, a part of that process of al you know, it's a qa'idah, it's, it, it's full of qa'id. It's a way, a consistent set of principles that you need to be upon. And so he was referring to the importance of when we uh, have, uh, you know, make a tafsir, that if you do not understand the meaning of an ayah, you should go to another ayah because the Qur'an, you fasr al-Qur'an. Wa sunnah, you fasr al-Qur'an. So you should go to the Qur'an to explain the Qur'an. And if you don't find something there, go to the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. And if you don't find something there, go to the tafsir of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala majma'een. And if you don't find something there, go to the tabi'een with tabi'a tabi'een. And that way you are not just coming from your intellect. Because the fa'idah he mentioned is that many of the people of desires how did they start out? They started out the Qur'an, they didn't understand, so they went to their aql and their intellect immediately. And that's a difference in minhaj, a difference in methodology for understanding the Qur'an. So Ahl Sunnah, they go from, they look for other ayats that if an ayah is general in its meaning, they go to, and, and perhaps they find another ayat which shows that it is specific in its meaning. Or the other ahkam related to Qur'an. And likewise, then if they don't find the meaning, they go to the Sahaba, with Tabi'een, and so on and so forth. So they're sticking with the Salaf. They're sticking with the Salaf. Then they are and digesting with their intellect. However, Ahlul Bid'ah, as far as a minhaj, 
they go to what yashkala alayhim, you know, what, what uh, is confusing for them, they immediately go to their intellect. And so our intellects differ. And this is why you have, for example, the Ashadis and other groups, why they tend to, uh, uh, this is where they tend to depart from Ahl Sunnah. And they go to, for example, Tafweev, or they go to Ta'wil. So they either just say, well, we don't know it all, and they just leave it. Or they say, uh, you know, they say, we just leave it with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't understand anything. Okay? Or they go to another extreme and they make ta'wil from their intellect when there's already a minhaj, there's already uh, uh, tafsir and explanations from the sahaba radiallahu ta'ala or from the tabi'in or the itba'a tabi'in. It's already been codified for us. So this is a big difference. This is what we see with a lot of these groups. Sorry to get off topic, but even look at uh, people like, uh, I won't say his name, but certain individuals who now have just, just came out with a, a flag of bid'ah. They're holding it up like a sword uh, and, and, and making i'lan, you know, like we're proud to be going against the scholars and the salaf and we are glad to belittle them and planning our, our sword of intellect and Einstein intellectualism because we've reached a pinnacle that they could not have reached. Wa'iyadhan billah min dalal. May Allah protect us from being a source of misguidance and misguided. That's two. Bal mudil. One who is misguided, that's one thing. Okay, you're misguided, that's hurting yourself. But one who misguides others, that's a double whammy. That is absolutely something you have to strive your utmost to always check yourself if you're doing any doubt. Always check yourself and, and be open to constructive criticism if it's based on the kitab wa sunnah and the understanding of the salaf. Then at least reevaluate, at least relook, at least research. But if you see that it's from Hawa and people's uh, uh, just going around in news, false news, as they say, fake news, and, and, and spreading evil and spreading riba and namima, which is a sin which people get punished in the grave for. The Prophet said, Qala fi hadith. مَرَ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم على قبرين فقال إنهم إنهم يعذبان وما يعذبان في كبير أما أهرهما فكان لا يستدر من البول وما الآخر فكان يمشي بالنميمة. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was walking by some graves and he pointed the graves. He said إنهم إنهم لا يعذبان وما يعذبان في كبير. Very, they're being punished and they're not being punished for something that the people think is a big deal. أما أهرهما as for one of them, that he used to not clean himself properly when he went to the restroom, Akramakum Allah, you know, bowl, urine, would splash on his garments, or it would be, uh, or he didn't make his stingy at all. So, muhtamil, as the ulama uh, mentioned. And then he said, and as for the other one, is they used to spread namima. This is also very relevant for what we're talking about, because people go on social media, on Facebook, on this and that and the other, on various forms, social media platforms, they take something and then they spread it. People can now take your whole picture and they can make whole videos of you and cut and paste. I've seen clips and bits and pieces that people have sent to me of some of our esteemed du'a of Ahl Sunnah being cut and paste and their heads are put on this animal and their, and they, and their, their statements are just... <laughs> You know, brought up to say some of the most wicked things or, you know, intricate details about some of the most detailed and intricate matters. And this is a wicked, wicked sin that the ones who do this incur. Can you imagine that you spent hours making a very high tech video about someone who maybe Allah loves? You spent your time. You were like, it wasn't that you were just committing a sin. You were watching pornography. You were drinking some wine or whatever. No, but you spent time putting energy, writing and, and, and scripting and cutting and pasting, getting the audio perfect, getting n nice video, um, uh, you know, stills and all, all these other things in order to belittle someone maybe Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala loves. SubhanAllah, hadha jira'in. This is a great, these are crimes. So getting back to the ayah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Oh, you will believe if there comes to you a disobedient one with information, investigate, lest you harm a people of, out of ignorance and become uh, over what you have done regretful. 
Okay? We don't want to be like that. Wa'iyadu billah. Imam Asadi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions about this, and this is so relevant for us. Be careful. And I'm advising myself first because I've jumped to conclusions uh, many times by reading and misunderstanding someone's social media post and responded, and then had to retract and clean it up because I misunderstood. It happens all the time because when typing, it's it's open to error, and when typing, it's also sometimes things are muhtamil. They're very um, uh, ambiguous, and it could be it could mean this and it could mean that. So it's very it's it can be confusing. So be careful about always rushing to comment and always rushing to criticize. That's the whole point that I'm trying to mention here. Imam Saadi, uh, we're just going to give the malachas instead of uh, he said that and and just translate. We're not going to go into the Arabic. He says. He says, this is also from Adab. He said, this is also from manners. He says, and this is the manners that those who are responsible, and the, you know, the people of knowledge and those people who are, who are responsible, this is how they, they, to Adab, to Adab Ghayrihim. You know, that this is how they educate other than them with these types of manners, okay? And, and practicing and using it. And that is that they, you know, they, they affirm news, that they do not rush and, and take the news of wicked sinners. That's the shahid. To be careful of what you hear and uh, where it's coming from and make sure it is backed with adillah. That doesn't mean everything that disagrees with your desires. You love Yasser Qadi to such an extent or you love Hamza Yusuf or you love this one or that one and you're going to defend them in even bid'ah. Even if, if, even if the person, listen to the Prophet ﷺ, he, he said about our ummah, what would happen to us. He said, The Prophet ﷺ said, you would follow, you would follow the way of those who came before you, uh, uh, arm span by arm span, uh, you know, and arm span by arm span, hand span by hand span, until they even went into the hole of a bub. A bub is a special kind of a lizard that lives here. And some of the people eat them. Uh, you would even enter it, even if they went into that same hole. Because it's a difficult hole to get in. When they hunt the thub, they have to put a, a pickup truck and shoot smoke in it. Or they flood it with water because the thub hates water. And then he sticks his head out and then they yank it. Or they tie, catch it with a rope or whatever. Or shoot it. And so the point being, it's difficult to get in that hole. And it shows our nation would follow, as the, uh, the, the people of Hadith mentioned, that they will follow the way of the people of disbelief. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned that same uh, statement uh, in the Hadith of uh, Abi Waqid al-Layfi. And so it shows that even if the people, uh, the, the, the Jews and the Christians did something, we would follow it. We'd follow their sunnah. So likewise, we don't want to follow the sunnah of Ahl bidah We don't want to follow the sunnah of anything, anything which is not pleasing to Allah. We want to follow that which is correct and sound. And we want those proper Islamic adab and manners. So, be careful about where you get your information from. A last point I want to mention, Ahabitifillah, is another dangerous thing because we have so many people who claim that they're following the Khabar al Thiqah. Okay? And unfortunately, this happens mostly in, as an internal problem that we have as Salafis. That we have some, we have so many people, we have so many people who are Ghayr al Thiqat. They're not really trustworthy because they're. Other people know them for many wicked sins and lying and cheating and stealing and zina and this and this and this. But some of their friends think that they're thiqa and they take everything they can from them. And whatever they say, they take it as the haq and then they make tatbik or a hukum on the other people. This is a very dangerous thing and we have to be careful of that. Ahabatifillah. You need to affirm what you hear and if you hear something, and it's presented with dalil, also don't be ta'asab and don't refuse it. If it's presented with sound, authentic adillah and statements from those individuals, and we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan.